In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Docker container in VS Code. We'll set up the environment and deploy it so that anyone can use this container on any machine and the environment will be the same no matter what. No more works on my machine problems. If you find this video helpful, like and subscribe. If you want to learn how to do other cool things inside of VS Code, check out my VS Code Superhero course at vscodehero.com. The link is in the description below. But really quick, what is Docker? Well, Docker is a tool that makes it easy to create, deploy, and run applications. It uses containers. Think of a container sort of like a virtual machine, but not. Instead of creating an entire virtual machine with its own operating system, it allows the applications to use the same kernel as the system that it's running on. This makes it super fast. I'm not going to get into all of the details on exactly how Docker works, but just think of a container as a completely separate and isolated environment. It has its own OS, memory, CPU, network, and so on. So let's get started. First, you'll need to install Docker on your machine. So go to docker.com slash get started. If you're on Windows or Mac, you'll need to download and install Docker Desktop. If you're on Linux, you'll find instructions here on how to get Docker installed. After that, we'll also need the VS Code extension Remote Containers. After you install it, you'll see a new tab and this new icon in the bottom left corner. This lets you know if you're in a container. So now let's create one. So I have a fresh Create React app here, and we're going to turn this into a container. So let's open up the command palette, F1, and we'll search for Remote Containers Add Development Container Configuration Files. Now we can select the type of environment, and since this is React, we're going to choose Node.js, and then we'll choose the version 14, which is the default. Notice that it pops up here uh, that we have a dev container. Do we want to reopen it in a container? And we'll do that in just a minute. So for now, we're going to ignore that. You'll notice here that we now have a .dev folder, and within it we have two files, the devcontainer.json and the Docker file. First, we're going to look at devcontainer.json. This is the configuration file for our container. The first item that we see here is the name of the container, and this can be anything that you want. And then we have the build information. Here we have our Docker file, which points to our well, Docker file. And then args, and this is where we can set the version of Node that we want to pull in. After that, we have settings, and these are actual VS Code settings that are specific to this container. This is part of what makes developing inside of a container so great. We can set specific settings so that our entire team is working in exactly the same environment with the same settings. I normally use Bash, so if I open up the terminal, you'll see that I'm using Bash. I'm going to change this to ZSH. Now, a side note, when you choose your base image, most are pre-configured with all of the tools that you'll need. For instance, Node.js comes with Git, ZSH, and other tools already installed and ready to go. Now, after that, we have our extensions. Again, these are VS Code extensions that we want to include with this container. So if there are any specific extensions that you want everyone who uses this container to use, you'll add those here. The easiest way to do that is to go to the Extensions tab, and then let's add Bracket Pair Colorizer. So if we right click on it, we can say add to devcontainer.json. This is much easier than typing out the odd extension identifier string. Now because we are working with React, we'll need to forward the port. So let's uncomment this line, and we're going to forward port 3000. Add a comma here. Now remember that this container is isolated from everything else. So in order to access it, we have to forward the port. Next, we're going to configure our post create command. So let's uncomment this as well, and we're going to run npm install. So after the container is created, npm install will run, and that will get all of our packages installed. Lastly, we're going to add a container environment variable. But because we're working with React, we need to add a flag in order for React's hot reloading to work properly. We're going to add container env. Within that, we're going to add chokadar use polling, and we're going to set that to true. We'll save that, and that's going to be it for this file. Next, we're going to look at the Docker file. For most Docker containers, you'll see a lot more in this file. But for this example, we're not going to modify it at all. But this is where you'll specify where the base image is coming from for this container. Optionally, you can add additional commands to install other packages or dependencies in the container. So traditionally, you could use apt-get update to make sure that you have the latest software and then install any other packages that you might need. 
So now it's time to see what all of this does. So let's open the command palette F1 and we're going to search for remote containers, rebuild and open in container. Now the first time that you do this, it's going to take a while. It needs to download all of the dependencies. And after it's gone through the build phase once, it will cache everything and the subsequent rebuilds will be much faster. So if we click on show log, you'll see which step it's at. Now remember that we set the terminal to ZSH. So let me open the terminal and we'll start a new terminal here. And you'll see that we are running ZSH now. So if I move to the root directory, let's CD back a couple of times, and then we'll list this out. You can see that I'm not on my local computer anymore. I'm inside of the Linux container that was created. So let's go back to workspaces and then back into code. And this is where a project folder is. Now let's start the React app by running npm start. All right, and now we can open it on our localhost 3000. We can do this because we have forwarded port 3000 from our container. So back in VS Code, let's go to our app.js file. And let's edit something here. In this paragraph, we'll say, I'm in a container. All right, we'll save that and we'll go back to our browser. And we can see that hot reloading is still working. This is not running on the local machine. This is running in our container. Now let's have some fun. We set the terminal to ZSH, but let's customize it. So we're going to create a .zshrc file. And we're putting that inside of our .dev container folder. So in here, we're just going to export ZSH. We'll make that equal to root oh my ZSH. So on the Linux container, oh my ZSH is installed in root. And then we'll set ZSH theme is going to equal cloud. And we'll set source ZSH oh my ZSH dot SH. All right, we'll save that file. And then in our Docker file, we need to copy the .zshrc file into the root of our container when it loads. So right after this, we're going to copy the .zshrc file, and we're going to put it in root, and then .zshrc. All right, we'll save that. Let's go back to the terminal, and we'll stop the React app. Now remember what the terminal looks like right now. Now let's reload it. So F1 to open the command palette and then we'll run remote containers rebuild container. Now it should rebuild very quickly because everything is cached now. Now you see that our ZSH theme has changed. Pretty cool. Let's make one more change before we send this out for everyone to use. Let's set the default theme. So let's go back into the dev container, close the sidebar, give us some more room here. Now in our settings, we're gonna set the workbench theme, color theme, and let's set that to GitHub Lite. Now I don't have GitHub Lite installed. So you can see that it's giving me this error here and it says that the theme is unknown or not installed. Under extensions, we'll need to add that as well. So it's github.github-vscode-theme. So we'll save that. And then let's rebuild. So F1 to open the command palette and then rebuild container. Awesome. Now we have a default light theme installed and now we can send this out to our team. Go ahead and upload this to GitHub for everyone to enjoy. Okay, okay, I would never do that to anyone. Let's change this to my code stacker theme. So let's see if we can bear this light theme for a minute here and let's change this to code stacker theme. And let's change the GitHub theme here under extensions. And that's code stacker dot code stacker dash theme. All right, let's save that and rebuild it. F1, rebuild container. Much better. 
All right, I'll upload this to GitHub. I'll put the link in the description below so you can play around with it. If you want to learn more about how VS Code can make your coding life better, check out my VS Code Superhero course. The link will be in the description below. And that's going to be it for this video. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.